All right, so we are in for another courageous conversation. My name is Niyama Shang. I'm the leader of the Trailblazer Oasis. And one of the things that we really focus on there is how do you take these things that make you different, the things that make you stand out in the world, the things that you can bring uniquely to contribute, to make your own impact in a way that continues to help you build your influence, your impact, and your income. And in these courageous conversations, we're focused on two things. One, and I have to say this here, one of them is really about building our community, giving ourselves as a tribe a chance to come together and not just have to watch it from afar, but actually get a chance to meet other people who are on the journey as well, learn from each other as we're going through, and really just get a chance to know beyond just like um, an intellectual knowing, but getting a chance to actually see see one another and be in community with each other. It's a big reason why I choose to do this in this way. I, I could easily meet with everyone individually uh, and still accomplish. I can make my own solo videos and, and accomplish a lot of this. But there's there's a reason why we choose the tribe and because I know the power of community. I know that there is more value in bringing all of us together than in just keeping us all in silos. The second thing here is that these conversations are all about practice. We call them courageous conversations because one of the things that I do is I, I somehow am able to create safety where, wherever I go. Uh, part of that is because of me growing up as an African-American male and knowing that I cre in me creating safety for others, I could feel safe. Right? And now it's a skill set that I have. The problem, the pro not the problem, but the opportunity that I see with that there is that um, being safe, being safe often doesn't feel enough, right? It's like, it's, it's a great way to keep us where we are, but what we really want to do is to be able to leverage that safety to be able to, to go beyond where we've been in the past. And so with these conversations, when we come together, it's our opportunity to be courageous, to be brave and to practice to build our muscle in this space in a way that like we can then go out into the, into the world and share that in a way that is in integrity with us. One of the things that I have found is I've found from my, my experience here that I tend to have my own process and, I, and my process is not, should not be your process. I'm just going to share mine though, just so you can see as I keep going through and discovering more about myself, uh, and owning more about myself from a place of uh, allowing the things that I thought were weaknesses or the hidden things that were driving me that I didn't know were actually in control. Uh, as I continue going, going through that process, I've started to see that there's actually like four distinct stages that I go through. The first one is the discovery phase. Like, I, like do I even know that it's there? This is when we're going from the place of, of it's, a, it's a stage of awareness. Um, and giving you an opportunity to see, oh, okay, this is what's actually here. Now, a lot of times people, we, we want to go from like, oh, I see this and then I want to get rid of it. You know, I don't want this, this element of mine. Why, like, why is this here? For me, it was anger. I'm like, I shouldn't be angry. You know, I don't want to intimidate other people. But when we do that, we miss out on something important. We miss out on the gift that it also offers. So the second thing that I found when, when, and truly get into integration is after the discover phase, there's a period of appreciating it. And I say appreciate very deliberately. There's two sides to appreciate it. One of them is being able to embrace it and to be grateful for it and to see the value that it has in it. And the other side of appreciating is almost like it's in the investment sense where something appreciates over time. So this is also the time where we're cultivating and making that thing that we thought was was didn't have a place for us uh, into something that's even greater um, and, and starting to grow that more. The third place that I go, the third phase has been an experiment phase. We're right now in the middle of an experiment phase for me. I know that um, that part of where I'm at is experimenting with how do we bring community together? I've embraced that. Like, this is the way that I want to, to go around building my business. This is how I want to bring people in. And now I'm, experimenting with a number of different ways to bring us together as a community and grow on from there. And then the last one is to leverage. So once, once I've gone through all this here, this becomes, when I say leverage, it's almost, it takes that element, that thing that was um, almost the dark side of me 
or, or a weakness I didn't want. And it turns it actually into part of one of my strengths and one of my calling cards. When I when we get to the leverage stage, it's it's the element of being able to say, I am the you want to work with me because of the community. You want to work with me because I have access to my anger. You know, like I have access to so many different things that I can meet you wherever you are. I have the capacity to be with you. And it's a change, it's a go through that journey. I find that like that to me is like the integration journey uh that that I'm that I've found consistently uh, in one way, shape or form, I've gone on each time that I've truly been able to bring in something and, and add it to my rep- repertoire, truly be unapologetically myself. So today in this conversation, we're really, we have a focus here uh, with a theme on the courage to create dream clients. Uh, there's a number of different things that, uh, that came up to mind when, when I brought up this, this concept, but as we go through it, we'll also look for ourselves where we are on the integration journey where we are in terms of what might be keeping us from, from creating the clients that we want based on whether we are uh, at a stage of discovery, at a stage of appreciating, a stage of experimenting or leveraging the things that make us amazing to bring in more of the people that we want to serve. All right. So with that there, I, I never know how these conversations are going to go. And uh, that is, that is one of my favorite parts about all this year. Um, I have an agenda. I have some things written down with actually with timestamps and that's, that's usually not the way I go. Um, and I'm happy to let all that go to serve what is here in this room. So with that here, let's do, let's give you all a chance to speak into, speak yourselves into this room and how I like to do it today is, um, give you a chance to, you can unmute yourself, uh, introduce, just, say, just let us know your first name. Um, why you decided to come to this session and then what is what is the number one question on your mind when it comes to creating dream clients it could be a question it could be the number one conflict but i i want to make sure that we're actually addressing what y'all are what do y'all have on your mind versus like what i thought would be really cool to tell i can always make a video on that uh alone but since we have the magic of us being here let's play with that um why don't we start with you monique and then we'll go to christine Hi. Oh, okay. There you go. Um, yeah, so I'm Monique and I showed up today because last time we talked about how I was going inward and I really found another piece of myself and felt the urgency to navigate that and to create a space for me. And so over the past few weeks, it's been very tumultuous, but now I'm feeling like I'm more prepared to uh, step out and use what I've learned over this past little while as leverage to help others. So I guess I am here um, because I don't know how to ask people to join me on this adventure, really. Awesome. Awesome. We'll get a chance to play with that, Monique. Okay. All right. Christine, why don't you speak yourself into this room? Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm Christine. Um, and Niyama, thank you for doing this because uh, this is, I've been saying that I want to connect to a greater community, surround myself with powerful coaches, be inspired, be challenged, put myself in uncomfortable places. I haven't really been walking the talk. So this is a forum that I thought well, I need to do this. So that's why I joined today. So thank you for creating that. Um, my question, I don't know if I have a question. I think, I think, uh, and I've known this for a long, maybe my entire coaching career is I really have yet to fully commit to my dream client. Uh, and that's, I know that holds me back in some way. I think there's a little, though that it's probably, yeah, the fear of commitment and that, what if I choose this and then it's the wrong way? Or um, we call it an unlearning a lot, like trying to let go of what I've always thought is the right thing to do, uh, which is, um, yeah, you require community to do that. So that's kind of twofold why I'm, why I'm here. I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can keep it going. You can keep it going. I like, could go is... the whole time. Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
thank you, Christine. It is absolutely wonderful to have you. Um, and I wanted to acknowledge you for stepping in and walking your talk. Um, and I think that is like, to me, it's so fun for me because what, what I always have in my mind is the moment that someone decides to come onto this conversation, they've already been served. Just like just in the openness of this, the visibility that's there, the 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 the, el the elements of vulnerability, you know, I think that's part of the reason why I I only prepare to a certain extent, because I'm like I can't expect anyone to be able to get vulnerable. I can actually not even expectations. I can't create an environment where other people are willing and open to get vulnerable if I'm not willing and open to get vulnerable myself, and I need to have that space there. So right now I'm also walking my talk for years. I'm like, I, my mission in life, I'm bringing together a truly inclusive and empowered world. And then I met with people individually one-on-one -on -one in like, <laughs> like these small little areas and there was just this disconnect. So I just, I just really wanted to say like, um, I feel you on that and I really acknowledge you for stepping in and, and coming in that way. Thank you. Awesome. So some things that I heard here then are um, some questions on their mind, like how do we invite people to work with us? Um, and then also um, commitment. Where is the commitment that, that we want? And it's, al it's almost as if like, as you were saying to Christine, the, the idea of like right now, who are my ideal clients right now that I'm willing to commit to uh, as I feel like this continues to shift and we continue to see more and more uh, out in the world. So I actually want to start off with let with giving a little bit of space to the right now component of this all. This is not something where we need to like like sit down and have our ultimate clients for the next years and like it's this is not this is not really that space. Uh, and the reason for that here is that what I get is that we are continuing to evolve and we are continuing to grow. And the clients that excite us today may not be the ones that excite us the next the, the next time or the, the problems or possibilities that we're looking to create might continue to evolve. So I would love to just give us a little bit of space to just be like kind of relax a little bit into not having to get this right for eternity and instead be able to look at this as an opportunity for us to practice knowing, practice discovering more of it, of what, what it is that we want and practice well, for whoever our clients happen to be, our dream clients happen to be at the time, how do we want to go uh, approach and bringing them in? Awesome. So I'm going to share um, a story with, with you all here. Um, and the, the question here was, was really around, um, in my mind, was around how, how you like go about creating clients. So one of the things that is one of the angles that I choose to take is around how do we, how do you do things in your own unique way in the way that like gives it your own stamp and signature that, that has you have your own space as you're standing out and doing this. Um, and I think it ties very much into the invitations that you want to be bringing people into. How are you inviting them to work with you and get an experience of that uh, as well as who are you choosing to invite along the way? This story of mine goes back years, back to when I was in college, in university, as they say out here in Singapore. Um, and I was a part of an acapella group. And in that acapella group, I uh, I was known to, to I had like a reputation of selling out the most tickets for all of our concerts. Uh, in a 700 person auditorium, I was pretty reliable to sell a hundred of those tickets. Um, and it was it was fun for me, it was enjoyable. And there were elements of it that just like, it, it just worked. Um, and at that, and at that time point in my life, I was just like, you know, I was a young person doing what I loved. I then came out of college and joined another acapella group. It was a barbershop chorus, four part harmony. This, this, um, cor this chorus we had, uh, instead of 13 members in college, we had 45 members, uh, in this New York city chorus. We were also, uh, top 10, in the in the world um like multiple years running um we were uh, there was a number of like we, we we ran the gamut from age and everything like there was so much available to us we were also uh at the time very like um well known for our social media game like our market people came to like how are you doing this you know and yet whenever it came to selling tickets for our concerts there it always it ended up being like this big struggle you know, it was always like this push, how we're going to make this happen. And, and the numbers that I was seeing in college, I wasn't getting anywhere near um, in, on an individual basis. And what occurred to me 
as as time went on was that in college I gave people a chance. We had these art sings, and we gave people a chance to actually come and see us sing all throughout the year. Uh, there were just these various places where they got a chance to like get a little touch of this, get a like hear a song, get to get to know us, and we get a chance to, to explore with one another. And then when we got out, when I got out into uh, the real world and we went and we tried it a completely different way where we would spend all of our time practicing several hours a week, three hours every single week, uh, bringing, honing our craft to this excellent uh, level and then just kind of emerging once or twice a year saying, hey, we have a concert coming and, and go forth. And that really struck me as I was building out this business. As I come out here and I look at like how I'm looking at, at bringing in my clients, it's a big part of the reason why we're having this conversation right now, because the distinction for me in terms of when it was easy and fun versus when it felt like a lot of work was for me, there's an element of giving people a chance to experience what it is that we're doing and then just offering it, offering them a chance to take that experience to a higher, more intimate or more immersive uh, environment. And so we're, so that's happened with me now with this conversation. Um, I'm, I now have uh, my coaching podcast and where I'm doing one-on-one -on -one and group coaching conversations. It's all about giving people the experience while still doing the fun thing that, that I love. Right. Uh, so I wanted, I wanted to share that story here to, from a standpoint of like playing with our approach to uh, creating clients. And what I'll do here is I don't need this to go any further it can if there's something meaningful there. Um, but what I'll do here is I'll just like to just open up uh, the microphone uh, and just give each of you a chance to to back and see and just share either one thing about this that really resonated with you or one time in your life when you're like, actually creating dream clients was just like super simple for me in this space here. And I'd love to like just hear, like just share with us a story if that if something like that comes to mind. Uh, and what I'll let you know is if we do share that, I'll also be listening to try and see what is your secret sauce? How is it that you do it uh, your way? So you can start doing it intentionally as opposed to this having to happen. So any, any comments, any thoughts, any, any things that come up from, as a result of that story, or do you have a story like that of your own as to when things were just easy for you when it came to creating your clients? Yeah, Monique. The part that resonated with me about that was like this pressure and um, I guess this pressure to like get people where you need them, where, where they should be, where you think they should be. But when you have that like intensity, when I have that intensity, to me or like this need or this like but I have the answers you know like no one really feels that or wants to show up um but when I allow space for something and I talk about it with my heart and why it's important to me and when I talk about belonging and creating these spaces where people get to play around with showing up differently that changes everything so I I feel like just that shift from like I need to get people here to just being open about what my vision is or what I do from the heart instead of the mind and and taking that pressure off good let me ask you here um I'm getting curious as, as you say this here, how has like, how does that, if at all impact the ways that you're inviting people into working with you beyond this, beyond the heart mind part, like uh, how is that impacting it? Yeah. You know, I was kind of inviting people as a, I need help in practice to get better. Um, and I've switched out of this, like, no, we're not practicing anymore. We're doing the thing. You don't need practice. You just need to do the thing, you know? And I kept like for a year, it's been like practice, 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 practice. And at some point 
I have to show up. I have to show up as who I am and what I speak and breathe into the world with my own actions. Because not only do I ask people to show up differently, I ask myself to show up differently. And with that in mind, I have to show up differently, if that makes sense. It is starting to. Let's let's keep exploring and, and seeing from there, all right? And I, I what I'm feeling right now is let me just let me see if I can create an agreement with the two of you here. Um, intuitively, I feel like I'm with two amazing people here, and one of the things that I like to try and do in these tribe conversations is to make sure that we're all able to benefit from one another in in this space here. So my invitation for each of you here is. Are you open to this space being a place where if someone hears um, that we can all listen with curiosity for the individual as well as for ourselves? Um, and and as long as we ask first and we see, like, are you open to any additional insights or questions that come from from others along the way? Is that something that you're open to? You can just show me with like a show of hand if that works for you. If it doesn't, it's totally good. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, there's 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 just this element here where it's like, okay, I'm gonna be listening for certain things, Monique. Uh, and I'm like, well, Christine's here and she's amazing as well. Like, I wonder I wonder what she's hearing. We don't need to go into it at this current moment, but I just want to make sure we open that door there. Thank you for that. Monique. Christine, how about you? And I think the question I would ask you, yeah, firstly, was there anything that, that came up, anything you want to share related to that story or anything that's that's on your mind right now? Just random thoughts of, um, I, I think the creating a space to have, I'm 100% on board that creating a space where someone can experience coaching is the greatest selling tool. I know we hate, sometimes hate that word selling, but it really is. It's about offering someone the idea of what this is all about that we're talking about. I didn't know what coaching was even when I decided to go into coaching. I thought it was something else and then kind of blew my mind, right? So, um, so thinking about that more, and I've been thinking about it, but I, it's not something I act toward as much. I still do consults, which are, there's a coaching element to it, but I still kind of consult I haven't really been on social media of late. I'm, I haven't been tapping into those opportunities. And I think the other thing it brings up is um, of late, I've been having more networking conversations around networking with maybe the long term goal of um, coming in from more of a corporate and uh, leadership coaching perspective. And in some conversations, I can think of two in particular where I'm talking to, you know, um, a, a CEO or a, you know, very extremely senior person. And I not coming in with, with the, I'm coming in at a lower power level, right? So I'm not coming in and really creating that space. And both have had opportunities to invite them to a coaching experience. And I've done that, but I know that I haven't really convince them there's no like the why right and so I know that I'm not fully stepping into my power in that moment I'm still coming from my old kind of corporate self that always felt a little bit like awkward in the room I still I'm still awkward in the room maybe that's my strength I need to convert into a (laughs) let's play right Like, like even that like so firstly I get that I'm like, as you're saying this here, I'm like, I'm like sinking more and more in. I'm like, oh yeah, this, the levels here, level level play. Um, It plays out differently for me, but I definitely, I definitely get, get that. And, you know, I'll be, if, if there was a, there was a concept that was on my mind um, beforehand, I wasn't sure if it was going to come into play or not, but it feels like it might be interesting to explore uh, with you right now in this conversation. Are you open to to that? I'm open. Yeah. Cool. Bring it. Um, the question, the the word selling now, I'm good with it. It took me a while, but it's like, like, and there's also still, um, I have a distinction between selling and enrolling in my mind. It's just, mm-hmm. it's my own thing, but um, the selling part becomes something around uh, how do I convince you to come into something that I'm offering 
uh, and enrolling is like, it feels more like how, how do you, how do I extend an invitation for you to create what it is that you want to create? It's yeah. like, and let me sit with that. Let me slow down a little bit with that first. So there's something around um, when you were talking about selling and, and this and the power dynamics that um, that really kind of sh- shown for me. Um, and the question in my mind, basically the concept that comes on my mind is like, how can we always be a buyer when it comes to to creating clients? And this might be Monique when it comes to you when it comes to to invitations here. Like, how can we always be a buyer? What I mean by this here is like. I think there's like a buy sell relationship and typically the person who's like going to be the buyer is a person that has the the power in the relationship. It's like, okay, I like, I am either choosing you or not. What's in it for me? How, like, how, how's that going to work there? Uh, and one of the things that has been really a game changer for me has been around being able to hold people in their power without reducing my own. Mm. And the concept of whenever I meet someone, I, I like, and that's in, in the, in this kind of a situation, how can I go from a buy sell relationship, which is what they're expecting into a buy buy relationship where, and I, and it's really interesting because at first I thought it was, Oh, let me flip it around. They should be trying to sell me on this. It's like, no, we're, we're both entering in as buyers in this year. And so I would be I would be curious for you if you are putting yourself in that position where you're in the the CEO room where you're talking to someone that is that you you see being able to serve if you were showing up as a buyer in that relationship how how might that look for you specifically Christine It's interesting I'm trying to think through that I'm First of all, there's just the energy around it because we talk a lot about like the energy that we were showing up in that room, and it's just it's exciting because it's kind of like eyeing a, a prize, right? Something you'd really want, right? And it's like, ooh, I mean, even for some reason, it's just coming up right now, like something that's like indulgent, you know, like it's something like, should I get that? You know, <laughs> like not really. Um, so there's something just exciting about that and you're kind of it um i'm having all these random like it's like that retail therapy like like having that would be really exciting and cool um i guess that's just what comes to mind when i think about yeah well well, let's 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 not even a shopper really but you know yeah but like i think i think that's part of what makes that really fun right where you're where like because what i what i what i got right there was just like a like your your energy became very lifted your energy, it, like when you described it before, there was like, there was a heaviness and there was like a slumping of the shoulders even as you did it, you know? But what I was, what I was hearing from you was just like, there's this energy that feels like, I love the word indulgent, you know? I Like, like I get really curious. I'm like, oh, what would happen if like Christine just chose to like indulge herself going forward and, and use that as a bit of the metric? a bit of the compass of saying, okay, am I getting closer to my dream client right now? Mm-hmm. Right, Cause I would love this person I spoke with last week. I would love to coach it. It would be mm-hmm. fun, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so there is a, like a bit of that, like, this is a treat, right? Like this is something um, I, I want, but also that I can I can afford it. I'm not going to be out on the street. Right. Like I don't, if you're just playing with that same like buying mentality, like I'm ready for it. Um, I just, yeah, I, it's starting, it's starting out the conversation there. I guess what's curious about it is if it's like two buyers, are we at a stalemate? Like, are we, <laughs> like, yeah. do we, you know, yeah. do we need a seller? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Let's play this out here. Let's play this yeah. out here. Um, uh, <laughs> To me, I, like, well, let me just ask you that question. Like, do you need a seller? If there are two, two buyers there, let's just like, do you, do you need a seller? Well, I mean, I think it's a, it's like thinking of it as a partnership, which I do, the co- which coaching is. There's no, it doesn't, I don't want to, and I, I don't hate the word selling either, but I guess in that connotation, maybe I do because I don't want to, I'm not, I don't want to have to sell you on something like the coaching 
cells, right? That's the, and so we're just coming to that agreement on what that's going to look like, I guess, if that yeah. makes sense. This is, this is the fun, fun part. Way to look at it. Yeah. yeah. This, this is the fun part around like the, the, especially being in the discovery area. There's no right way with this year. Sometimes like people see it, they're like, Oh, I know exactly what to do. And then like they jump yeah, to yeah, somewhere yeah. else. But like, yeah. like, let's just be with this right now. Um, one of the things for me, whenever I, whenever I shift into a, uh, and I, and I remember cause sometimes I, I, I'll play the same game. I'm like, wait, who am I to do this year? They have all these experiences, all these other things. It's like, it takes me out of my power and, clearly the relationship is not actually built on anything that can lead to success for either me or the individual. Yeah. Cause I'm not showing that. I know that I'm a powerful mofo that like, and when people spend time with me, like things shift in their lives. Right. But I, if I don't bring that up to the table, we miss out. Mm. So in the buyer buyer relationship here, um, the thing is, yes, you're both selling, but I think the the element of it here is, I think it's as simple as this, Christine. It's like, has this person, like, I guess, I think it comes down to what your standards are. What, like, so there's, like, the indulgent element, like, oh, here goes a nice treat. It could be, like, this is, like, actually, I just, like, my thing is I only believe in premium experiences. Are Is this going to be a premium experience for me? Are you as a CEO going to show up with something that is uh, a vision that is inspiring enough to me? That is like, mm -hmm. am I seeing that you are someone who is going to put in the time, the effort, the work to do this year? Like, like I, like it, I'm looking for something that's, that's truly indulgent, a, t a place where we can go out and just like really bring a dream that almost doesn't even seem like it should be. It's almost like a desire, a fantasy kind of thing. Uh, and be able to bring that out to life. Uh, these are my words. So I'm, I'm thinking about it. Like what I would, what I would be looking for. Um, for someone for for me to want to buy into that relationship i get that that the elements of like yeah this could be fun but do i really i'm buying it with my own time i'm buying it with my investment i'm buying it with other clients that won't be able to take up that that um that period of time that's there i'm buying it in my own growth because uh like uh, there are times where i've bought things that seemed fun and i just ended up being the same thing that i've already done and i'm like oh, i didn't really get anywhere other than the insight that i didn't get anywhere I love that. That it is a real investment on my end uh, as much as it is on his. I think, I think where I'm getting stuck is that the, how I'm creating and thinking about probably goes back to that unlearning these conversations is because um, I'm going in from a networking standpoint, which indicates I'm not asking for anything, right? I'm not, um, uh, it, it's all about a, a mutual conversation or relationship, but I don't think that I'm going in with a knowledge of how to really, it's like, they're still in the back of my mind. Oh, in the end, I got to get to this kind of, you know, let me learn about your leadership and develop or your learning and development programs and offer some services. And it just feels awkward and, you know, um, forced a little bit in the end. And so, I even started kind of writing about this after this last conversation is like, if I was just truly approaching this from unlearning all of that stuff, my old corporate background, like all the career stuff, even like how you're supposed to run a networking meeting. Like if I was just really, I guess it's like the, I hate to ask how, but like how to create, how to create those connections in a really fun, interesting, curious way. And not, I feel like I'm defaulting to this kind of person that I am supposed to be in this meeting, which is everything I'm trying to get away from. But, you know, you kind of go back to yeah. what didn't work in the past. Like, I'm like, let me keep doing that. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> so I, I, I think, I think you, you just named three different words there that I think just, just to put it out for you. Fun, interesting, and curious way. Mm. Right fun, interested in curious way. Like there's a lot of like, I'm not even worried about your past right now. It just seems like this is what you want in this moment is to, to have a fun, interested in curious conversation. The fun thing about for me, when it comes to the buying element is that it's that the proposal, the client part that all comes last. 
right? Mm-hmm. That's like at the end of it all. The, mm-hmm. the, for me, I would just be really curious, what would it be like for you? Because I, I look at everything as selling, you know? I'm like, any conversation that I'm having with someone, just them even listening is them buying into what, I, what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. like, let's, if we were to, if you're going to extrapolate and bring it all the way down to like the first, like each individual conversation, I would be curious what would make you want to buy into a conversation with an individual overall. Right. And you don't have to like necessarily answer that right now, but it's like, it almost feels like the difference between how you would have, how you're supposed to show up in a networking conversation. I don't go to networking events anymore because I'm like, Oh, 98% of the time I am like out of, I'm out of the space, you know, there's a, it's not, it's not the conversation that I want to have. So I'll be kind of curious what would happen if, if like you were, all, if all that need, all you need to do is just to show up with the fun, interesting and curious uh, element of it all and saying like, these are the only conversations I'm having. And if you're not hitting these points, I'm actually good. I'm actually good. And I actually, I love that you're saying it's just making me, because I do, I say that to people. I said, my networking philosophy is like, who would be fun and cool to talk to, honestly? Yeah. Like, who, who would I want to have a cup of coffee with, right? Yeah. But then I go in, I went in with a different mindset. And I think if I even just, what I didn't do was allow him the opportunity to go deep, right? I get scared of getting bold in that moment. And if I had allowed him that opportunity, we would have gotten there a lot faster than the last two minutes of the conversation where I had no more time and I, there was no more, but he started to say like, what I really need is X, Y, Z. And I was like out of, right. I, if I had created that space and just kind of gone there in the beginning, like if I just had a really, truly deep conversation, um, then we might've gotten there sooner right or that could have it it would have i didn't allow him the opportunity to even go there because i talked myself out of it first i guess is the idea yeah that that last part feels really real like whether or not like the the constructing of a deep conversation like that's sometimes you need to have your own environment to create what it is that you want to create but that that part there around like creating creating the space for that to actually take place like that feels like a conversation that you would want to buy right now. And not underestimating him. Like, right. Like I was like, that's, you know, yeah. Well, thanks. I'm Monique. also seeing Monique's message here. So like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Monique, if you're going to celebrate it, um, if you're feeling that need, let's let that need out really quickly here. I just want to say like, yeah, for screwing <laughs> up. Like, yeah. Now you could just be like, Oh shit. That's not how I'm going to do it next time. Right. Yeah, like, totally. I love that. I love yeah, that. Yeah, me too. Cause I don't want to do that next. You know, I like, I like having the deep conversations and I like allowing, like I, it's, it's like, don't underestimate anyone, including someone who's succeeded. Why would I underestimate that person that they're ready for a really powerful conversation? So thanks. Cool. Well, I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Monique. I, like, I can also feel that. I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> um, and it's actually really interesting, Christine, that you say, like, why underestimate anyone in that regard, right? Uh, because, you know, we started out this conversation and you were saying, like, oh, I feel like they have the power out here and it's over here. But in the underestimating of someone else, it was actually, like, flipped, right? You're like, mm-hmm. okay, this person can't actually be on this conversation at this level with me, which is why He's I go He's not going to get it. He doesn't want to do that. Yeah. 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 Which is, so that's that's the underlying premise of buyer buyer or any of this part is like can you hold people in their power while you remain in yours? I love it. I'm like eyeing something really expensive, right? Like I just <laughs> now seeing like all these people. Just, not that I'm objectifying, them anymore, yeah. but you know, uh, yeah. But it's the energy that comes out. About that's what that. I mean. It's like yeah. this is super amazing. But what is it like, do I want it, you know? And if I do, like, what do I need to know, you know, to, to evaluate that? Cause it is, it's like a big, it is a big investment and purchase for, um, yeah. yeah. So I, 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 that's fun. Yeah. Go play. And the idea, the fun part about this here is that, um, just, I'm just looking to give you some space. 
some different ways to to approach this all and have different different tools. One of my things that's right in front of me here is like my number one goal with any of these conversations is to have you all leave with more powerful questions than what you came in with, not more powerful advice or more powerful answers. And it's not that's that is not served in any way the same way in, in the way that it would really be. So um I'm gonna I'm gonna just like tap into Monique and just like spend some time here and like, and be here. But I would, I would ask as, as we shift there, I would ask yourself, what's the question that would really serve me to just have on my mind as I entered into either networking or other types of relationships around this? I love it. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Uh, and I'll be interested in anything else that you, you hear or see when it comes to Monique or as we go along. So Monique, let's, let's play as well. Um, I'll be really curious for you, based on anything that you've heard so far, I'm gonna unmute you now, maybe not. Okay, yeah. you're unmuted, yes. Uh, based on anything, based on your experience so far, right? Um, on any on anything here, uh, what's been your, your um, what's been your top insight thus far? Yeah, it was kind of this um, thing that came in instead of being like, how can you serve me, but how can I be of service to you? So showing up um, for someone, um, it's not like, oh, I need a coaching client. I need like, blah, 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 but like, what can I do for you? Like, what do you need and how can I be of service? And coming from that heart space as opposed to being like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So really quickly, I want to ask you a question here, but I realized that again, the, my operating word right now is practice, right? And it's, it's in the practice of it all. Right. Um, I feel like, like the Super Bowl is one in practice as they say. Right. Um, so what I love to do is find myself sinking down a little bit into my own heart space. I'm going to invite you to sink into that as well, instead of like being up here, um, because what I'm hearing from you, one of the things that keeps coming through as a thread in this conversation is when you're able to speak from your heart, then things move, then things happen mm -hmm. there. So I would love to speak heart to heart with you, uh, for the rest of this conversation. So we can just continue strengthening that. Is that something that you're good with in this conversation? Heck yeah. Okay, cool. So right now, what, like, what's your, what's your heart asking you? What's the question that your heart is asking you right now? Can I be okay in just being like without an urgency to be anywhere? Can I just be okay with being? Awesome. And if you had asked your, your heart for the answer to that question, what does your heart tell you? Investing more energy into having faith instead of investing energy into fear-based ideas. And if you can, would you mind just saying thank you to your heart for providing both the question and the answer for you? You've been talking a lot, Monique, about speaking from the heart. And now I'm going to ask you this question. Uh, can you go ask your heart, what does it want to say? It says that I'm loved. I'm worthy, deserving. And now, if you can ask your heart this question, what is it afraid to say? I don't think it's ready for that. <laughs> okay, 
I don't know. I don't have all the answers. Cool. So why don't, why don't we start with, with speaking that into the world, right? If you're going to like, so let's, let's come from this place here of you don't know, you don't have the answers. I'm, I'm in a very similar place. Like, you know, I'm like, I, I don't know. I, I started out this entire conversation saying like, I don't know where it's, where it's going to go. I, like I made an agenda cause I wanted to, but like, <laughs> that agenda happened in the two minutes before we got on this call. I was like, Oh, we can talk about these things. Maybe, you know, right. you can't pre-plan a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So like just playing with the idea here of, um, of our, of the weakness being the strength here, how can not knowing, and allowing your heart to allow that to have its space and speak that out in the world. How can that create even more connection as you're making invitations for people to work with you? I guess uh, just creating spaces where I can actually connect with people, just spending time, just being, existing with people. And just ask your heart right now, if, um, cause I'm here and I guess, so I'm not necessarily <laughs> sure if that's a, if that's a mind answer or a heart answer, right? Ask your heart that question. Uh, you can just even ask if it, if it agrees. So, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Yes. So like, the, like, so let's play if, if you're, if you're interested in that, like without making this overly complicated, uh, one of the things that um, I realized that with the title of this year, it's like courage to create your dream clients. And it's like plural, <laughs> right? If we were going to, if we were just going to like bring it down and just like take out any complication and allow you to not have to know about all the clients, but just like a client or an experience or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. What do we need to talk about that would actually get you, not just what you came here for, but something beyond that, what you, what you, what you are really here for, but didn't know what your heart was desiring. I think at this point, I just needed a safe space to show up. Like I said, it's been a tumultuous few weeks getting to know me for me. And I think at this point, I just needed a safe space to show up. I acknowledge you for, for showing up in that space. And now that you're here, are you enjoying, are you, I think, I think there's an element of me this wants to just say like, you have the space is here, <laughs> right? So kudos mm -hmm. on that. Um, if there's a way that you want to play with it, we can play any way you'd like. If there's, yeah, like, I guess my question would be like, like, what's your request of us in this moment? You know what? This makes total sense. I always put a lot of pressure on myself to like be in certain places and do certain things and always push and strive. So I think just showing up here today and just being, which seems to be the theme today, is just that, is just to exist here without pushing to be anywhere else. So I think that in itself is plain. <laughs> in a way that I'm not used to, so. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, are you open to, and you may not be, right? So like, be, keep staying in your being, are you open to any acknowledgements from either me or, or Christine in this moment? Absolutely. Okay, um, so I, I will acknowledge, and then Christine, if there's anything you acknowledge, and I think the way that I'll do it is, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. It could be the impact that you've had on me. Mm -hmm. What I get like, 
what what I'm getting from you right now is uh, I'm just acknowledging just uh, just you in the being of it right now. What I get is that there's no right wrong. There's there's no effort that's in here to have to be a certain way uh, during this conversation. And what I'm what I'm really getting is a um, yeah, this is it, an honoring of yourself. I like I just it just really feels that you're fully honoring yourself. And I want to just really just call that out there and and give give allow that to be in this space here. Thank you for honoring us by choosing to honor yourself. Thank you, Pamela. Wendy, thank you for speaking from your heart today. I just feel this energy that is so palpable. Um and take this or leave this it just the the thing that just keeps resonating with me is we are the reflection of our ideal clients and that's true over and over and over again and the things that i heard from you were i don't know and i just think i just needed a safe space and maybe as a reminder that that's what they need from you um is something to kind of take from this or not but i think that's you. what i wanted to share Thank you so much. Thank you all here. Like, um, it's been a, a really beautiful experience of us all coming together and exploring this in different ways here. Each time we have one of these conversations, it shows up differently. Um, even just like in the energy that shifted from Christine to Monique, like it was just, if it's just something different that was, that was called for in that moment. And I'm really enjoying co-created these experiences with each of you here. As we go on, the element of this year is these will continue to grow for us. I'd like to continue to support as we move forward. One way to do this here is that um, we have the Outlier to Trailblazer Playground, which is our discussion forum. Um, any new insights that you have along the way, any wins that you have, any challenges that you have, any questions you have, go ahead and put it into uh, like bring it into that group. Right now, I'll be honest, it's a little quiet at this moment here. And a part of that, part of the reason for that is we're still getting to know each other. I'm not, tr my thing is that I'm not playing the discussing thing from a standpoint of I need to build engagement. No one has time for that, you know? Mm. Uh, instead, I'm like, let this be a tool and a resource for our community to come and continue the conversations that, that they want to have, right? Um, so if there's anything that comes for you in that space there, feel free to like extend this conversation um, and bring in others from the community or give them an, an opportunity to be on the journey with you. Uh, one of the other things I love about this here and the way that I'm choosing to build this, this was actually going to be, a, what I'm doing right now is actually going to be a paid program. Um, and what I decided to do was, what if, what if I just use it as my starting point? How much more would I have to serve if we chose to, if, if we chose to bring this as the baseline? So my invitation to you, and this is like part of the disservice of making it something where you can just sign up for, is that you might miss out on the value of what is actually there. So I'm going to call it out for now uh, and invite you to, to, to play in that way. All right. I'm also going to make an invitation. Now this is going out to you and everyone else that may be watching this in the future. Um, the invitation here is what you're experiencing right now is the power of people coming together and, can, and going on their journeys amongst each other and with, with each other. And there is an element of being able to be in a group setting that can open up different insights and different ways of thinking that is not always possible in just the one-on-one -on -one context. So if you're someone that's looking to be able to see things from new perspectives, to be able to take your impact to a level that's beyond where it's been here, if you're someone who is looking to really show up in the world as yourself and to bring that uniqueness out into the world for the benefit of yourself and others, and would love to do it with a group of people who are all out blazing their trail in their own way, well, then I invite you to come be, to come just have a conversation with me and see if, if the Trailblazer Oasis might be a place that will continue to serve you. Here goes the thing. I have to talk about it for myself here. I can feel myself getting uh, nervous about this in this moment. Uh, this, this, that I have to I have to walk my own talk. This is created for people 
who are my peers. This is this particular space here, the Trailblazer Oasis, is for people who are playing a big game and have a massive vision and are feeling misaligned or misunderstood along the way. This is our place to come in and, and really take the things that for most part, we can get 80% of the way there on our own. This is our place to find that one place where someone actually understands you, understands the uniqueness of what you're going through and can bridge that 10% gap for you so then you can go and take it the, the remaining 10% the way that you want to. We're not here to teach. We're here to learn and to grow with one another. And I am, I am a buyer in this, this case as well. And so if you're someone who wants to meet me and see yourself in your power and meet me on that level and be surrounded by nine other peers who are also playing a game like that, I would love, love to have a conversation with you. Go to, just send me an email, niyama at niyamaashong.com. And let me know of your interest or send me a message and we'll just create the time for me to serve you and see what goes on from there. All right. I appreciate you. I acknowledge you. Monique, Christine, I am, it's wonderful to have you as part of the tribe. I'm looking forward to what comes next. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you, Niyama.